stop. I think these cicadas brood X that erupted this year. I think they only go for like six hours and then they quiet down. But uh, hey, I found nature's cure for tinnitus, ringing in the ears. I don't hear my ears ringing. Awesome. Well, as you can tell, the Brood X cicadas are here. So I'll try to minimize how much uh, video I shoot because uh, I'm sure they're disrupting. Really liking the gazelle tent. I'm going to show you a couple of uh, hacks. Nothing mind-blowing here, but little things that I've come across to uh, help make it just a little bit better. One of the first ones is the doors. The doors are kind of on the corner. And when you pull it out of the bag and got it like this, you can't tell where the doors are. So if you drop it, open it up, and then you're monkeying around, twisting it around. I'm going to mark which one of these corners, two corners actually, have the door. Because I want my door here, or there. But uh, that way I'm not setting it up and then monkeying around. And for today, I'm just going to use some white duct tape put it on there and then uh, later because I'm sure this won't last through the wet weather but uh, I may uh, color code them somehow maybe a you know white zip tie something like that might be a good idea so let's see what happens so we got a door here this is a door, so I'm going to mark this. And you get the idea, so now when it's folded up, I can tell. Now the other thing you're going to see is on the zippers. So on these zippers, I also put a little piece of white duct tape on the solid door zipper because you get all four zippers, two for the screen, two for the door. At night it's hard to tell which one you're pulling. So that's a little tactile, you can tell that way. And uh, same thing, I could put like a, maybe a, a little zip tie on there and that'd be tactile, be easy to see. And uh, I thought about painting these and glow in the dark paint, but let, who, who am I kidding? I always got some kind of a headlamp on or a light or something. So I'd rather just be able to feel, all right? so. We'll get this set up and I'll show you a few more. So this is uh, obviously not specific to the gazelle tent, but something I started doing because I'm parking at, uh, camping at state parks where there's no ambient light and you can see the shade I'm going to have. So it's going to be really dark here tonight. I use a uh, solar powered landscape light. I actually have two of them and uh, turn them on after it gets dark. <clears throat> I put one out here so I can see my tent door, my way to the tent. And uh, my theory is it also, you know, brings bugs that are photo uh, toxic out closer to here instead of over by the tent. And uh, that way I don't have to turn on my flashlight headlight every time I'm stumbling around in the dark. So that's another quick little easy thing. So another thing, I wanted to do was put a tarp off of the front of the tent. I was camping last weekend and it was getting sprinkly, so I kind of jury rigged one. I bought these big clamps, a couple bucks at Walmart, and I have a 8x10 tarp and I put it off the front and I clamped the tarp onto the, uh, the pole of the uh, rain fly. So I took the tarp and did that. I didn't like that. It didn't work real well. Um, I got two expandable poles I put out here, tied those down. Um, so I tried to come up with a better idea. So my next try was I put the tarp further over the tent, and on each side where it pops out, you got a little ring where you grab the pop out and where you can also anchor your sides in case you're in high wind. So I used a bungee cord on each side, but then the top of the tarp wanted to pull forward. So this time I'm still going to put a, the 8x10 tarp up there, but I'm going to try to center it halfway back, and I'm going to have to jury rig a, uh, a tie for the center of the tarp. I'm going to take that over the back end of the tent, tie it off there, and then tie it off on the sides, and then put my stakes out. It may only give me like three, four 
feet a cover, but that's good enough if it's rainy. So I want to sit outside and not be trapped in the tent if it's sprinkling. Now, admittedly, I don't know if I would leave the tarp on in wind, thunderstorm, etc. Um, so that's something to consider, but we're going to give that a try and see what happens. So here's my tarp extension kit. These are my two elephant poles. I have my 8x10 tarp. These are the two bungee cords I use. And they work pretty good. I don't have a tape measure, so I can't tell you how long that is. Maybe 18 inches. But uh, like I said, I'm going to try to do a little bit different. I'll, I'll cut in and out and edit this so you don't watch, have to watch the whole boring thing. All right, so here I got my tarp. Found the center of it on the end. And I took one of these, the little tarp bungee. And it's really made to go like this, which is awesome. And if I could find one that's like two feet long, that would have worked great everywhere. But I couldn't find that. So I just use this as my uh, bulb. You could use a stone or something. You just put it up under the tarp, and I took a string, a rope, tightened it really tight around there, and then made a loop that I can hook into. This is going to go up over the back and hopefully tie into the back, so we'll give that a try. So there it is. I got the tarp over the top. Now it's going to come this, this way uh, quite a bit. Uh, but if nothing else, we just learned that an 8x10 tarp will cover the top of your tent pretty good if you're uh, caught in a horrible downpour and you got a leaky uh, rain fly. So I'm going to go around the back, try to center it, and then tie it off. All right, so here we are at the back. There's my bulb. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move the tarp that way. I'm gonna do a string down to here. I'm gonna use a uh, taut line knot that I just learned last weekend. Well, my dad passed away about seven months ago. And he was a sailor. He was a surface sailor and he was a deckhand for a while. I was a sailor, but I was a submarine sailor. I didn't learn any knots, maybe a square knot. That's probably what these are. But a taut line knot is, a, I guess, a typical Boy Scout knot. It's basically what you use on your tent to uh, tighten up the line, and you can you can adjust it, and it'll hold taut. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. One of the things I'm endeavoring to do, especially when I'm sitting out here camping with downtime, I bought a book or two on knots, one for fishing knots, one for regular knots. Very interesting book on regular knots, but... Uh, it's very important to keep our brain stimulated as we grow older, to try to burn in new neural pathways. And, uh, you know, there's lots of geometry and visualization with and dexterity with tying knots. So I thought that would be my exercise and kind of honor my dad because he always knew a lot of cool knots. That as a kid and a teenager, of course, I never bothered to ask and never bothered to learn. So I'm going to do it now. So there it is. That may not be 100% right. I may have gone the wrong way, but it still works. And it's taut. You can loosen it up. You can slide it up to tighten it up. So I like that. Now I'll show you what I did on the sides. So here I went ahead and used the bungees. You can barely see up there the top center. And uh, the bungees are pretty quick and easy. I think I'd rather uh, tie another uh, rope like I just did, though, because that is compressing that a little bit. If I take it off, it pops up. I don't think I like that tension on there, so I'm going to try one side at a time and see what happens. All right, so you can see I got the front up. I already had the white rope I had from the last time with the, with the adjustable top line knot, and uh, I just want to pull it over this way a little bit. So to add a line, you know, an easy way to just put it over the, the tip of my adjustable pole, just make a loop, try not in, not in that. Boom. Easy way to hook onto the top. And I'm just going to bring it down here to a stake and pull it top. So there it is. I got to tell you, I'm not too happy with this campsite. When I looked on the map and at the pictures, definitely looked like I was, you know, back in the woods a little bit. 
and uh, this is H loop at Houston Woods site number one non-electric and a lot of traffic I, I won't get this site again I'll go exploring tomorrow anyway see more traffic anyway uh, so there it is I got the uh, elephant poles I actually got a second set of those on order for some reason but uh, I found a cheaper version that I think is the exact same thing probably twenty dollars cheaper uh, but I do like them so far. You see I got my taut line. I adjusted it a little bit and Then around the back here That goes all the way up to the top middle also adjustable. I don't know I kind of like the bungees. They were easier, but the problem with the bungees is you got to muck around and get the exact length You know, you don't want too much tension. You don't want it pulling forward too much and uh, I like the rope idea personally So lots of room under there I bet that's a good, you know, I don't know, six, seven feet space. Now, of course, if it's raining, windy, this may not be a good idea if it's windy, um, but I like how it kind of has the shape of the tent even out here. And uh, you would want to lower one pole, put it at an angle so your water runoff would be better. But if I get sprinkles or something, I'll be, still be able to sit outside, listen to the locusts, swat them away, and uh, we'll be good. So I got the tent up and I put the rain fly on. Probably shouldn't. The lighting would have been better. It's really overcast and I hear thunder in the distance. Uh, but this is my cot. Like I said before, it's a large Coleman. A smaller cot would be fine, but I already had actually two of these. And uh, I like it up against the wall, obviously, but the walls kind of come in. And uh, that can be a problem. So I don't want it rubbing on that corner. So yeah, I can pull it out from the wall. But if it shifts, I just took a pool noodle, cut, I don't know, about a three inch piece, put a slice in it, and put that dude right on there. And uh, they tend to stay on. I've used this a couple times. So you can see here how it's up against the wall. So of course I pull it out and kind of let it hang over the in there so it doesn't rub. I just wouldn't want over time rubbing or if it got windy or something. So that's another little hack. If you got something big in here, you don't obviously want it rubbing against the tent wall uh, over time and uh, create a rub spot, a weak spot. So anyway, I would take one of these elephant poles and maybe put a, it comes with a rubber tip on top, um, but um, if you're camping in the snow and you're expecting snowfall, your roof may pop down. You can pop it back up. But I think one of those these uh, sliding poles would be uh, good if you had some kind of a you know something soft, a big rubber stopper. It does come with a rubber tip, but uh, you could use that inside on the central hub and prop it up in the center of your tent if you're expecting a heavy snowfall over overnight. So that would be my other one. Now the doors. Nobody likes these doors. Is that a weird shaped door or what? But the shape of the tent, these are the pop-up. I'm not going to complain too much. But it's really very easy. For me, at least, once you get used to uh, backing up the right way, going in and out, it's not too bad. Like this. <laughs> See what I mean? Now, the other problem is if you have two cots, put one against that wall, put one against this wall, it's got to be a smaller cot because, man, you're really stepping over. So that's another kind of sort of bad thing. Other than that, I'm loving this tent, especially for one person. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. And, of course, be sure to, if you liked it, like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Now I will say one thing about these lights, when I got it facing towards the tent, when I go to bed and I'm, I'm done for the night, I turn it off. One, to save battery in case I don't get sunshine the next day. But the real reason is if it's 2 o'clock in the morning and there's a raccoon between my light and my tent with the shadow on the tent, and I wake up and see that, I'm done. I'm bailing out because it's going to look like a bear or a cougar or something.